Okay, the deep dive into the drag scene kind of happened on accident. We ran across a sale happening at a, at a local <laughs> hobby shop and we decided to pick up a couple cars. Didn't know anything about the no Ooh. prep drag scene at all and just bought the cars for fun. And then they sat for about a month or two. Um, when we got them going, we tuned and ran them on uh, One. 3S, which I will say is it's challenging, but it's also really hard to control them. So um, I will say we got a lot of laughs, but if you want to be competitive and you're looking to maybe do some weekend racing, stick with 2S and tune for the 2S. My neighbor Scott found a race for us. And so we went out and raced and, and I actually won one win was from the guy in the other lane crossing the line and then the other win i won fair and square so we went back all excited it was a disaster we got spanked part of that is because we were so excited and we wanted to tweak and tune and make the cars better which is fun um, but the other part of that is just uh rookie mistakes so we feel like what? we learned a lot we're paying our dues and we're what? getting better for it so i wanted to share a little bit of uh, what we exactly. learned, did wrong. Let's jump in. The single best thing you can do to get your low C or probably any other RTR down the track straight is aftermarket wheels and tires. These are belted and they have helped tremendously. These cars come from the factory with kind of a wonky setup. They're towed out and so you need to tow those in with your turnbuckles and then also adjust the camber so that the tires and wheels are as vertical as you, as you want. But that will also help in your straight line capabilities. You'll have a minor adjustment in the rear to also get the rear tires flat for the best contact patch. The next thing I would say are shocks, and this is up to personal preference, but from the factory, there is a pretty sizable urethane bumper in there that prevents droop. Cut my urethane bushing in half and added some to the outside of the shock body so I could prevent the chassis from hitting the ground. Um, from the factory, there is nothing there and the chassis hits the ground. So I also have a, a half bushing in, inside the shock body to um, allow for some droop so that the tires uh, make contact with the ground when I make my launch. Okay, moving on. We need to talk a little bit about the slipper clutch. Adjustment here is important to quick run. If it's too loose, it's gonna slip for too far down the, the track. Uh, if it's too tight, it becomes difficult to launch. So you need to find a happy medium between too tight and too loose. And that's the fun part. Once you get out there and run some packs through it, you can definitely tell a difference and get your car set up for how you like to uh, drive down the track. I usually do this with all my RTRs is I make sure that the lash between the pinion and the spur is as perfect as I can get it. So here's a couple of the rookie mistakes I made. I went ahead and got a new body, which you can see is really badly scratched on the top. I uh, didn't know, but my tire had come unglued, causing the car to flip. And I couldn't tell if it was something else that I had done the night before, you know, something had broken in the car. I couldn't figure it out because it was literally wanting to go up on the top almost immediately. I also mentioned that I did a bunch of work to it the night before and sure enough, my clutch was too tight. Two things came out of that. One, if your car is running the night before, don't go changing stuff, especially when it has to do with your slipper clutch adjustment. And then two, check your tires between every run and you should be good with that. Okay, well, hopefully you've lasted till this long in the video. And if you have, I'm hoping you are able to charge your batteries and get out and rip your cars. One.